I need to first probably parse this and then I can probably begin speaking about it. So, so Alibaba has released an image generation model titled Quen Image, which is a very fitting name for this model, I suppose could be said. But based off of just some of the first things I'm seeing here and sample results, it does seem like a really impressive image generation model. And beyond that, this seems to be specifically, I won't say marketed, but marketed towards generating very legible and clean text in both English and Chinese. So if we just take a look at this little blog post, we're going to see that basically there's a bunch of sample image generations and things of the sort. They do mention some key features, which most notably are the superior text rendering. However, and something we will see a little bit more of if we just touch upon a brief part of the technical report, is that this model seemingly has the capability to go beyond just generic text to image generation. It does seem like the way this model was trained will allow it to actually go ahead and perform very well in image editing tasks and overall kind of like they mentioned depth estimation and things of that sort in the technical report. So while I'm currently only going to be able to test this for image generation by like typing a text prompt and then getting the generated image, it does truly seem like this model may be expandable into other tasks such as like segmentation and replacement of certain things or other types of things that are referenced in the technical report. Now in the blog post, we can see that there are some benchmark JPEGs and I do have to say perhaps like a bar chart would have been a little more palatable for one to um, make sense of what, what we're seeing here. But overall, um, just assume that the longest line here is the Quen. So essentially what they're saying here is it compares favorably and is perhaps more performant than other state-of-the-art things like Seed Dream, Flux, and Bagel, and other things of that sort. So obviously we don't pay too much, well, I don't pay too much attention to benchmarks, but it is good to see that this is a bit more performant than some other very good models. With that, the demos here are just basically a bunch of images with text properly generated within them. And truthfully, again, the fun of this is actually testing it yourself as opposed to just looking at default sample image that could very well be kind of picked because they best represent the model's peak capabilities. There is a rather in-depth technical report for this model, which I suppose anyone interested could just kind of go and comb through. I will say that a lot of what is shown in here, aside from like the more technical things like the math and stuff like that, there are a lot of good comparisons of different types of testing between this model and the other ones that are actually shown comparatively to it in those benchmark JPEGs that we saw. So if you kind of do just scroll through this, you will actually see some other capabilities of this model comparatively to some other models, such as like, the actual legibility, or I don't know if that's a word, of some text here and things like that. You can see the original and then the Quen image and then a bunch of other kind of comparable or kind of competitive models like Flux right here. And in addition to that, there is just a bunch of other things. They do actually show a demonstration of it where they give it a photo and then tell it to like render the photo, but with the individual like... Um, What's the terminology? I don't know why I'm forgetting. Um, turned like 90 degrees or something like that. That would be somewhere all the way down here, I do believe. So basically right here, they have input prompt turn right 90 degrees. So they show the input image and again, the comparisons between the other ones. Now, as I said, I don't actually have a way right now to test this with like modification of an input image like is shown here. But I do just want to bring these things up because in addition to this, it does again seem like this model may actually have some pretty intricate capabilities in terms of image editing as well as just image generation where basically they talk about the, in addition to text to image generation, they extend the model to explore multimodal image generation tasks that incorporate both text and image inputs, including instruction-based image editing. And then they mention something down here, other computer vision tasks, such as depth estimation. And they talk that it natively supports image inputs and visual patches extract, and then a bunch of like other technical things. But basically this is just referencing the model's ability to do more than just text to image. And I think the mention of computer vision tasks such as depth estimation is actually rather interesting. So with that, and with all the kind of technical and introductory jargon out of the way, we're basically just going to go ahead and generate some images here and see results. Now, first and foremost, they do have a sample image right here where they mentioned that a guy is looking out a window with some <laughs> writing on a yellow piece of paper and there's a cat. So I have gone ahead and actually just generated that image and immediately I will notice that <laughs> it kind of, all right. So I, uh, 
I designated a slightly modified piece of writing onto the little yellow piece of paper where basically, <laughs> we'll just look at the image. The cat has taken a poo in every room of the house. I'm thinking about, okay, it should say pudding. I'm thinking about him up for adoption as he took a poo in my bed last night and I... Okay, and then it kind of just gets a little less legible. But again, setting that number of steps to 20 from like the suggested 50, that is a significant decrease and kind of think of it as like the amount of space we give this model to generate a properly detailed image. So that's an unscientific way to put it. But it did do a really good job in terms of at least some of the first text right here. And again, it is extremely legible and it also integrates elements of like non-text. So to do all of that is <laughs> quite impressive. And again, we can see that this cat may be looking to be rehomed. So now we are trying uh, another sample generation where essentially a micro center customer is standing in front of a laptop looking off into the distance with a smile. The customer has opened a text field on the laptop and has typed the text call for a good time and then the number five repeating. In the background, an, empo an employee looks angrily at the customer and then these prompts are just kind of to help improve, I suppose, image generation result, such as Ultra HD 4K cinematic composition. So this will obviously take a little bit of time, seemingly probably between five and six minutes. You can see there's some GPU utilization here, but I'm just going to kind of, again, ignore that because um, it is very variable on what systems this will run on and things of that sort. All right, let's, <laughs> I just, I, <laughs> I'm always seeing the thumbnail preview, right? Let's just, <laughs> all right. And again, the main, like, at least way that this model was kind of touted was its impressive capability in generating legible text. We can see that it did seemingly come up with some logo for the micro center here. And then you see the person. So the employee's holding a laptop and the person is typing on it. It does seemingly look like some form of uh, perhaps space gray MacBook Pro. However, if they do, <laughs> they have written call for a good time, and the number is correct. There is also an angry employee in the background. Overall, and again, this is where it gets difficult to kind of judge because I am running this on 20 steps, so the image quality is not going to be at its peak. Now, I have gone ahead and just basically taken this kind of sample infographic or whatever you like to call it, but I have changed a few of these specific things that it is set to reference into more kind of financial guru style like uh, suggestions. Now, for this one, I am going to do the full recommended amount of steps, which is 50. So basically, um, to put that simply, it means this is probably going to take like 15 minutes to generate, which is somewhat frustrating, but I do want to give it a like chance to really generate something that is quite proper. All right, so as this is about to finish, I suppose we can just quickly touch upon some of the things that should likely be in this. Basically, it should say things such as cultivate stacks, 4X style graphics, um, perhaps work harder, earn sleep, wake up earn. So let's just go ahead and see if this infographic properly reflects the style of a guru. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That is good. <laughs> Build and maintain 10 plus income streams. All right. So first of all, let's just look at the kind of graphic. All right. I noticed that like there's some there's some weirdness like in the lines here. If you look at like some of my thumbnail photo backgrounds, there's also like some line weirdness there. I'm not going to try to lie about how those were generated, but we see that we have work harder, wake up, earn, sleep, earn. And then there's kind of like a stock portfolio thing. Continuous earning, engage in new skill and knowledge for growth. All right. And that is supposed to be like a bank logo, regular physical activity, boosts earning potential, prioritize focus, working hard benefits, both body and mind with a lot of like bank and financial looking things. Stay hungry. Of course, we saw build and maintain 10 plus income streams. And then of course, the go to cultivate stacks, appreciate nothing but money. And then there is just a hand there that does properly seem reflective of a human hand. So that's nice to see. And then how to be a guru. So overall decent. And again, if we just look at this based on the actual ability to generate legible text, it definitely did a fantastic job. In terms of some of the graphical elements and cleanliness here, I would definitely say I'm not super blown away. So I have gone ahead and decided to do one of my favorite styles of generations, which are movie poster generations with these image models. So I have just asked it to make a movie poster for Agent Poop Man. 
and we'll kind of we'll kind of see just what it comes up with. I lowered the steps to 25 and I also lowered the CFG scale, which means that the model will have more creativity in what it generates. A higher scale would correspond more with kind of directly sticking only to what is outlined in the prompt. So we want to give it a little more creativity. Now, as this does take a while to generate and I don't really have anything to do in between generations, we can do a quick kind of history lesson or nod to the past. So this model right here that we see called Open Dolly V1.1 is and probably still is to this day was and still is my favorite local image generation model by like a long mile. This model came out in late 2023, like December 2023, and you can see how old it is because it mentions that like Dolly 3 is still the big cheese. So obviously this is like quite old but this model was hilarious to do the movie poster test with because it would actually do a good job in text and then the things that it would put in to correspond with like whatever the title of the movie was on the poster were hilarious it really like this model <laughs> would do whatever you wanted it to do so it just kind of is like a throwback for me here and then basically we'll just go ahead and see our movie poster when it does get generated all right, let's take a look at our movie poster, keeping in mind that the resolution won't necessarily be mover. Wow. So <laughs> here we have Agent Poop Man. <laughs> so unfortunately, it. all right, I need to first probably parse this and then I can probably begin speaking about it. So first and foremost, we do see that this surprisingly did... <laughs> Did not do a very good job with the text. Aside from the quite legible poop man, the rest of it is not actually very legible. We do see some reference of like agent right there. I, <laughs> I am going to say though, this result is actually significantly better in terms of like the actual individual than the other results we've done. And I am a little confused on that, but just like the shadows, the lighting, even like the creases in um, Agent Poop Man's leather <laughs> Agent Poop Man's leather jacket are really quite impressive. In the background, we see um, some interesting kind of characters and things like that. They're not necessarily in focus. Um, this individual does have a nice mustache. And again, you have like the stuff down here that you would expect to see in a movie poster. I probably should have just inverted the resolution for a movie poster, which I'll try another one of these and we can do that. And then we see that this is likely going to be in Ultra HD. So overall, that is actually a... It's funny because it did really bad with the text, but the rest of it was pretty good. Like the actual generated image of this guy, um, our agent, and things like that. So unexpected, but... <laughs> quite all right see if this was if someone just happened to skip specifically to this point in the video they would probably be somewhat perplexed um <laughs> i mean he, yeah i think this guy's missing a finger all right so for the final test i am just doing a movie poster for steve's pc repair the poster should feature undertones that steve is more than just a pc repairman so we'll see what this goes ahead and does with that all right steve's pc repair movie poster is Steve's PC, repain. <laughs> All right, again, it did a horrible job with the text, but it did a good job with the non-text. So here we have Steve, the PC repairman. It did mention, well, it tried to mention Steve more than just a man. Oh, okay, Ultra HD 4K. <laughs> so those magic prompt words, it's actually putting them in the movie poster, which I suppose is all right. Again, not the best um, Steve's PC repain <laughs> and uh, all right there's two things I want to try One. there are aspects of what I had asked for but not entirely um, hmm, that is quite disturbing all right so overall, that's going to wrap up our first look at the newly released Quen image model. Again, this model does seem very interesting, and a lot of what I mentioned in the introduction to this video is probably more succinctly summed up by the GitHub repository, where basically they showcase its capability and strength in generating legible text. And beyond that, they talk about the model's ability to do far more than just text to image, such as image editing, manipulation, and even kind of computer vision tasks like 
what we see right here where there are bounding boxes around specific elements in these images. Now, I do want to just sum it up here by mentioning specifically that there are some things here that kind of do lead me to think if one puts a little bit of time to it, they could be able to get this model running on a significantly less resource intensive machine where they mentioned the diff stint studio providing support for Quen image, including low GPU memory layer by layer offload inference with four gigs of VRAM. So that is definitely something to look into for those of us who want to run this locally on something that is perhaps not like a 24 gigabyte GPU or something of the sort. So overall, that is um, probably going to sum this up. This is a very interesting model. I was not like extremely blown away with it in terms of image generation results. The text generation was obviously fantastic and I do look forward to seeing this model implemented in other use cases such as image editing and things like that as I do think it will very much shine and excel over the competition in tasks like that just based off of some of the examples that were listed both here in the repo and in the actual technical report as well. So with that, that is going to probably conclude today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want to subscribe, I suppose it does actually help to mention, please subscribe. So I will begrudgingly do so. And yeah, thanks for watching.